Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this week's video, we're gonna be taking a look at this motor. This is the 1721 2400 kV motor from Castle Creations. This is absolutely known for being a speed run motor for radio control cars. And let me tell you, this motor is an absolute beast. And you may know that by now because you've seen our previous videos on the channel talking about this very thing and taking it apart and taking a look at some of the internals to it that make it so good. Today we're doing things a little bit differently. We're gonna measure the actual electrical characteristics of the motor. We wanna find out what is the actual KV value of the motor as measured? What is the RM value, which is the internal resistance of the motor? What is the IO value? And then lastly, we're gonna talk about some power ratings for this motor. Now one of the biggest benefits that this motor has is just its overall physical size. The larger diameter of this motor being in the 17 series class under the Castle Creations sizing makes it so large and that is quite significant, plays a very large role in things like heat dissipation and so forth. Enough with that, let's go right into our first test, which is going to be measuring the actual internal resistance of this motor. I'm gonna get that set up and then we'll be able to take a look at that. The big reason why we have to set up this complex circuit is because we cannot actually measure directly internal resistance. Internal resistance is going to be very low for a motor such as this one, and it's not gonna be possible at all to get an accurate reading with our multimeters. The way that we do this, even though we're using the multimeters, is we don't measure resistance. We know the formula V equals IR, voltage is equal to the resistance multiplied by current, and from that we can determine what the resistance is by measuring the voltage, measuring the current. So we're essentially passing a current through the motor winds, and it's gonna come out on the other side here and we're gonna measure the voltage drop across that. We'll use that calculation to ultimately determine our internal resistance value. Now let's power up the circuit, find out our voltage reading as well as our current readings. I'm gonna go and connect our final connection here that makes the circuit live and we get a 0 0.01 volts as well as 2.83 amps of current. I'll disconnect our power circuit. Everything is heating up as we do this, specifically my power resistor so that I'm able to run this circuit. Uh, they get really hot really quickly. We'll do the calculation, I'll throw it up on the board. It's probably gonna come out to somewhere around 0 0.003 ohms. That's what I'm expecting for a motor of this size. And that is very low, but then it's also expected with a motor at the size and the wine type that we have for this high performance motor. Let's go rearrange everything now and go through our KV calculation. All right, I have the circuit here set up to measure KV. It's very simple. All we're doing is we're taking our multimeter, we're running one set of leads to our windings. We're gonna go through and measure the frequency of the motor, how fast we're actually rotating it with our drill here. And then we're gonna go and do the exact same thing, but instead we're gonna go and set it on our AC voltage. Once we have those readings, we take our readings and we throw them on the radiocontrolinfo.com website and we'll compute the actual KV value of this motor. So let's go and fire up for our first run. Let's find out what the frequency is. There we have our frequency measurement. Now I'm gonna go and switch over to our AC voltage and we're gonna get the amount of voltage that we're able to produce at that speed. That's why we run a speed check first and then we go and actual measure the voltage right after. Full power, here we are. There we go, we got about 0.431 volts. Now we take both of those values, we throw it onto the calculator and we'll compute our KV value for this motor. So the next thing to do is to get our IO value. In order to do that, I've hooked everything up to our lab test equipment and we're gonna just run that at full speed using a three cell lithium polymer battery. Most manufacturers do the IO value at 10 volts. We're gonna do it slightly higher using our 3S voltage. And you'll be able to see on the screen what the voltage is, what the current is, and even the RPM that the motor is hitting. The values that we just ended up measuring, those are pretty well concrete. There's nothing that you're able to do to manipulate or massage those values to make it look better 
for your specific motor if you are the motor manufacturer. Now when we talk about wattage, it's not the same case. So the value that we're about to talk about, you cannot really compare this against other manufacturers. If you're trying to compare the wattage that one manufacturer states versus the wattage of another manufacturer, you could be giving yourself an unfair comparison and one motor may look better than it actually is. And that would not be a true test. What happens is motor manufacturers use their own recipe, their own formula in order to come up with their environment, their specifications to apply to the motor. And I'm about to do that right here, right now, using all of the theoretical specifications that I know, including the surface area of the can and going through all this to see what this motor is actually possible. Doing that, I've taken a look at this motor and this motor, if you were to look at the peak amount of power that it can output, let's call it for a duration of eight seconds, this would be able to put out about 10 kilowatts overall of power. Now one major point to talk about with the motor is that if you are pulling a certain amount of peak power for an extremely small duration of time, let's say less than a few seconds, you're going to be able to pull potentially more than 10 kilowatts of power. And this is where you can see some of the significant values that some have already been able to achieve with this motor, hitting over 500 amps under load. And depending on the environmental conditions, if you're running it in cooler weather or if you have a significant fan set up so you get cooling to the motor, you can pull even more power. It is truly only limited to as hot as it gets. As long as you keep those temperatures in check, this motor will continue to put out more and more power for you. Well guys, I hope this gives you a sense as for the specifications of this motor. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.